who worked out today already? Who's gonna work out today? Who's not gonna work out today? Tomorrow morning, I fly back. I'm gonna go to the gym before I leave here. All right, next question. Stand up. I listen. I want a lady. Someone. One of the ladies has to answer. Ask a question. Okay, you're next. Okay. Jay, one of the things I've always loved about you is that you're um, very humble and you always have time for people, even though through all your success and everything like that, you still make the time for people and still have that humbleness about you. How do you manage to be um, the biggest name in bodybuilding and still keep such a level head and have you know time for people? Because when I started training, I said if I'm ever big time, I'm never going to change from what I was. I was a fan and I was always respectful. I was raised differently. But I remember meeting a couple pros, I'm not going to mention their names, when I was younger. And they shunned me off like I was, you know, obsolete. And I knew if I ever got to the point, I would try to never do that to a fan. And I've always... Listen, I'm trying to get a lot of places. It's frustrating sometimes to take a picture with... I mean, I stayed last night until they shut the lights off here, you know? Um, because I'm here for the fans. I'm here for no other reason but to be meet and greet and, and support the people that supported me. Some of you guys are new fans. Some of you are old fans. But most importantly, you do create a hole to this business and give people like myself the opportunity to stand here and tell a story and, and really give some credentials to what we do. So I just feel that everyone should be treated equal. I'm no better than any one of you sitting in the room. You know why? I said it in the beginning because I was a kid with a dream and I never knew I would be great. We all think that, okay, we want to be something great, but I was just like every single one of the younger generation of guys in this room thinking, wow, if I could be the next Jay Cutler or be even like a portion of that and stand up there and give a speech and talk about their careers and I reflect now at, at 42 years old to be able to say wow you know I did this I did that I mean I still have so much thank from for all the support of the years so you know once again thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to stand up here and talk to you guys you know and I'll try to take a picture with everyone in this place I know it's not possible but just understand, I'm, I'm here for you guys, okay? So whether it's this year, next year, the year after, or I'll be here until I can't stand up anymore, make sure you guys take a picture. Just don't ask me to flex too much. Okay. Stand up, please, because this is the first lady question. I appreciate it. Hi, Jay. Hi. Um, my question's about fasted cardio. Your thoughts on it, because everyone has a million thoughts, and your pre-workout meals, like what do you recommend, how long before, that kind of thing? So cardio, fasted cardio you said, right? I get up in the morning, like I said, I, I always believed in fasted cardio, so fasted meaning before you eat anything in the morning, I believe it's the best time to perform cardio, there, there's a lot of studies behind it, although I know when I was getting too lean for competition, I couldn't do a lot of fasted cardio because I would shrink a little too much. Um, so I would perform it usually first thing in the morning, empty stomach, or after your weight training session. Those are the two times you should do it. I used to do a session late at night too before I went to bed when I was really trying to get in crazy shape. But if you're going to perform your cardio, it's going to be after your weights always or first thing in the morning, okay? Pre-workout meals, I always try to have carbohydrates and protein mixed. Nothing too heavy as far as protein, meaning... I don't like to eat steak or anything really fatty before I train because I want to get the carbs. I want to be able to process it a lot cleaner to be able to go through your system, get into the bloodstream, get the nutrients in there to get that crazy pump. So I always, I always like to eat at least two meals before working out, although I have trained recently on a fasted program where I don't eat anything. I go to the gym and I train with weights, supplying the day before, if my calories the day before were sufficient enough, the pumps have been unbelievable. I've been training on an empty stomach sometimes, and for the first time, I mean, I didn't do this when I was competitive, but I'm doing it now. And this guy over here says I look pretty good, so I guess uh, I guess it's working. 
I'm trying to stay leaner now, so that's why I'm doing that. So if you said, well, why are you doing it on an empty stomach? Because I'm trying to get smaller and leaner and look up here like still full. I'm about 252 when I left Vegas before. Um, so I, I feel like I'm making progress still. Okay. Who do we got? Okay, over here, sir. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Um, I was just wondering, what did you do to stay motivated after having like setbacks of injury and stuff like that? Good question. I tore my bicep in 2011. I lost the Olympia. My dog died two weeks before I tore my, actually, right after I tore my bicep. I was going through a divorce at the time. Um, pretty hard time in my life, but, um, you know, I think, you know, we have all have a different mindset, and I knew, you know, moving forward, I had to continue. I mean, I had a, a lifestyle, and, you know, I used others around me, support system. I don't know, you know, a lot of you guys have someone that, you know, you can talk to or, or be close to, you know, whether it be family, friends, um, sometimes to pick you up. You have to think, think positively and realize that, listen, other people go through this. So I looked at other guys that were injured, other guys that, you know, their dogs died or whatever I went through. Like I said, I was going through a divorce, so I was, you know, I was going to some counseling for that to try to make that better. Um, so it's an adversity we all deal with. And I tried to look on the positive side. I was able to come back. I competed in 13. I was a shadow of what I, what I was prior. But I got up there and I had fun. I was injury free. I wanted to compete one more time without an injury. Um, and I was able to do that. And probably was one of my funnest Olympias ever because the pressure was off. But I was able to repair. I tore my, my bicep training in the gym after doing an exercise I did hundreds of times. I was in a photo shoot, kicked the dumbbell up, tore my, my bicep off my shoulder. It took me about eight weeks of recovery and I was able to get back in the gym and start training. Was it ever the same? I don't know if it was ever the same, but I'm still able to train. I have no shoulder pains. And that's one thing I can say at 42. You know, you hear a lot of people with injuries and everything, their joints. I feel great. I still go in the gym. I can do anything. I don't train crazy heavy, but I have no restrictions in what I do. I still can, you know, do every exercise. I have no joint pain. My knees are great. It's amazing for the years that I pounded the weights and did what I did, but I feel I did it smart. I trained not crazy heavy. Um, I trained more volume. I was able to focus on doing the 10 to 12 repetitions and just really getting the job done to be the best bodybuilder I could be. But I, I had a lot of support around me. I, I'd have to say that I have to give credit to the people that really gave me the influence and the positivity. Whenever I got down on myself, I had someone there to pick me up. And honestly, you know, I, I mentioned, you know, my, my wife, my ex-wife, she's a huge supporter still to this day and gives me a lot of, of backbone to what I do where we remain best of friends. So we need that. So the girlfriends in the house that support the guys, you know, pat yourself on the back because I know it, it can be uh, it can be tricky sometimes. What do we got, sir, in the front row? Hey, Jay, how are you? Good um, to see you. I'm in my fiftieth year now. I haven't been um, I've been sort of dambling in the gym now and again, but I really want to get serious about it now. Um, just a couple of questions in relation to um, age fifties. Um, obviously, um, I have to start eating a lot more food to get um, a bit more size, but also supplementation. I spend a bit of money on that, much to my wife's disgust. I just want to know what the um, I, you know, what the best supplementation is and the best way of going about it at my age. So you're trying to be age, and you're still trying to make progress. And listen, there's so many people that start training after 40 or after 50. It really depends on what your goal is, but it's just the same routine as all of us fall with getting the meals in every day supplements i wouldn't if you don't have the, the meal plan in place you can't you can't buy the supplements because you're going to waste your money i'd always suggest a good protein maybe some branch chain aminos when you're not getting enough calories although you should be getting enough calories but the pre-workouts all that kind of stuff i wouldn't spend money on that stuff if you're not motivated to go to the gym then you shouldn't go Pre-workouts, guys, are for taken for the days where you're dragging ass. 
You don't go to the store and you buy a pre-workout and you take it every single day you go train. That's the wrong way to take it because no matter how great it is, it will stop working at a certain point. A, a pre-workout that has 30 servings should last you two or three months. Okay, it shouldn't be something you buy every month. So you guys that are out there buying, you know, product after product, thinking that, okay, I need this, I need this, you get addicted to it. So I would suggest, you know, protein is something you can use continually to the end of time. Branch chain aminos, those are all things that are going to be great for your body. Your body's not going to get used to them. It's going to continue to work. But your food is going to be your ultimate thing. So you've got to get the meal prep in there. Your training, if it's restrictive, meaning if you have injuries or, um, or joint pain, You've got to work around it. Don't say, okay, well, Jay Cutler does this shoulder press and that's how he got big. I got to do the same thing. That's not how it works. So pick and choose the exercise. Remember, muscle stimulation is the easiest thing. Shoot, I, I work out with, with bands sometimes in the, in the hotel gyms when I can't train just to get, you know, some blood in there, everything else. It's all about the little bit of stimulation and getting out and feeding it and continuing to stay on that diet. That's when it keep, keep your progression, keep the muscles full, okay? Age is just a number. Don't worry about it. I'll be 53 before I know it. I'll feel like you do, right? Not that old. My dad's 86. He still runs circles around me. I hope I'm like that when I'm 86. I like the, I like the beats, man. I like it. You Thank got you. my color on. Yeah. Thank you. I just take that. Take that to meet you. Yes. Uh, IJ, actually, my question is very close to that guys but could you please give me some personal advice for my situation because recently I get the injury in my left hand fingers so for these situations should I just keep the regular programs for both with the lighter weights for both sides or should I just keep the regular weights or just the right size. You know what, you're, you're gonna be, whatever you're restrictive to, I mean, you've got a finger, that, so it's not a huge deal. I mean, you can still use the bars and all that stuff, right? You can curl, the, the weights might have to lighten up. But, but listen, it's, it's not permanent, right? I mean, that's how many weeks you gotta wear that thing. What'd they say? Four weeks? So, you'll get back, just stay with some sort of routine. You know, don't get discouraged. That's the most important thing. Still hit the gym. Just work around the exercise you can't do. You know, just stay with that routine, and then you'll still you'll still make progress. Remember, even if it's just a half-ass workout, it's still progress. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. How are you? Uh oh. <laughs> um, I suppose I know you're a male, obviously. So, what's my what's your take on a female wanting to get bigger? They train like a male as well, and what do you? What's your take on recovery and sleep? I don't get How that about much sleep? of it. <laughs> How about sleep? All right, so you want to know if a female trains as hard as a male? Say it again. If we want to grow, we is, want to grow. Do we train the same as males, or a, lo a lot? Take yeah. On that? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much standard. I mean, um, I mean, I've trained with women. And, you know, the exercises are pretty much the same. Obviously, the weights are different. Um, you know, it really depends on the body type and what kind of routines you do. But it's, it's, it's pretty standard. I mean, all squat, they do curls, you know, shoulder presses, whatever. Um, but there's not really anything restrictive that, okay, a, a male can do or a woman can do. Um, as far as sleep patterns, I always suggest at least five hours of straight sleep. And I'm a victim of not getting that much. Do you sleep at least five hours? Don't lie. Why do you stay up so much? Okay. Um, I think you've got to get into that deep uh, REM sleep pattern at a certain point. I like to sleep eight hours. It wasn't always consistent with what I was doing, especially training for a show. Who's trained for a contest here? It's hard to sleep, right? You, you know, you, especially when the metabolism gets going, you get hungry, you get nerves as you get close to the show, so I'd get, be up every two hours. I'm a big drinker, so I drink like two gallons of water a day. So I get up and use the restroom in the nighttime. Um, I got up like three times last night. I drank so much yesterday, but that's one thing too. I still drink like two gallons of water a day. Um, but you should be, you know, going to the bathroom in the night to know if you're drinking enough. You have to drink a lot of fluid. 
a lot of water, guys. That's very important. Your muscles, I mean, most of your muscle uh, fullness is going to be water. So I don't think anyone really drinks enough, to be honest, uh, to really what their body is, especially when I was heavier. I mean, I was sweating all the time, you know, training every day. So you got to drink a lot. But uh, the sleep pattern is very important. You got to find a way to relax your mind. Um, you know, maybe you're stressed out, um, right? But try to do your best to get some sleep because it really it makes a big difference in how your physique looks and how your mind actually functions each day. I know there's a lot of I mean people use melatonin or whatever. Or, you know I like to have a big carb meal before I go to bed. That puts me in a deep sleep, but that's not always the best thing for everyone. You know, carbs make you sleepy, right? Okay. I got 10 minutes left, guys, so I'm going to continue to answer your questions, and uh, let's get some more in. Hi, Jay. Hi. I've got a two-part question. My girlfriend was a bit shy to uh, ask this, but she was wondering, during your career, during your career, how did you balance your work, your training, and you guys just mingling with friends and everything like that? And uh, second part for me, Ronnie Coleman recently wrote on the uh, hospital bed that his one regret in his whole uh, career was not squatting four reps at 800 pounds because he knew he had it. Did you have any regrets like that in the gym? Thank you. Okay, so I'll be honest with you guys. I was very selfish um, with my career. So I gave up a lot of the family events and the birthdays and, you know, I wasn't, um, I wasn't the best of friends. To a lot of people because I was dedicated to my to my craft and I think to be great you have to have some sort of selfishness to you but if you ask me Jay if you regret anything and it's easier for me to it's easier for me to say now than when I was competing because I, I wouldn't say this but I do have a, a little regrets that I didn't participate in the life journeys of other people as much like the family members and the friends you know i remember i refused a lot of weddings to go to and stuff like that because i knew that it was going to interfere with my dieting I was training for the olympia i didn't want to leave my house but i had to do that at the time to feel that i was putting a hundred percent effort because if i lost the olympia i walked away every time and i said you know what i put a hundred percent into it and I didn't want to do anything to say, well, that time I went there, you know, I, I could have been focusing more on the training and eating and growing up. So I was a little selfish in that part. But um, I, I say to everyone here, you know, you have to have balance in your life where it's just not, okay, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to eat my meals and, you know, I'm going to sleep, you know, 12 hours a day or 10 hours a day or whatever. You have to give time to your loved ones, your family, especially with the spouses, the girlfriends. We all can be very selfish when we, we want to do certain things, but I would just try to say be as, be as helpful as you can for those people that are around you to support you, okay? Um, as far as the, the things I did, I mean, the one thing I regret in my career, I, I skipped the 2002 Mr. Olympia um, because I moved to Vegas. I was building a house at the time. I was in California. I moved over to Vegas, and I won the Arnold Classic. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to sit out the Olympia, and that's the year Ronnie Coleman came in a lot smaller. And I had him on the ropes in 2001. You know, I, I almost won that show, and I had a lot, a lot of momentum winning the Arnold. I should have gone there and, and done battle with him, and I think the outcome would have been spectacular. But not to say the second place finishes built a lot of character, and it gained me a lot of attraction from the fans because I was the underdog for so long. It's kind of like the Kai Green Phil Heath thing. You know, Kai hasn't won it yet. He's got a lot of fans that are hoping he gets it. Phil's now the champion. He's going for, you know, his sixth win this year. A lot of people favor Kai over Phil Heath. And I can honestly say I know both guys very well. Um, you know, Phil Heath, you know, he comes off as, as arrogance, but I think a lot of the movie did that. Not the Phil Heath I know. Phil Heath is a great man, very humble. And if anyone gets a chance to actually talk to Phil, you'll see that character with him. So... Um, I just wish I would have gone to that 2002 and beat Ronnie Coleman and continued to, to win because I felt I probably could have ruined his ego enough that he didn't come back in 2003 like a monster and just wipe everybody out because he killed everybody that year, you know? Okay? So be nice to your girlfriend. 
And make sure you ask Jay Cutler a question next time. Don't be so shy. Yes, sir. Well, the my legend. Friends, my friends are too shy, so. Um, yo. Hey. Yeah. I'm saying hello to your friends. They don't want to say hi to me. Hi, oh. oh, guys. Yeah. Um, just because you've got such a busy schedule, and I'm sure most people can relate to that, is there, like, an optimum time to be going to the gym and doing your weight session, or does it not really matter? Like, if you, the only time you can do it is it's first thing in the morning or the last thing at night, or... Would you, or would you prefer, like, you want to get your breakfast and then your two meals and then train? That's probably best, but does it really matter? And Very, very good question. And also, I was wondering what kind of music you listen to while you're training. Okay. Um, so, ideal time to train. I've trained morning, afternoon, evening, in the middle of the night. I think the best workouts I've had are going to be after, like, Four meals because your body is really full, right? So the best pumps I get are later in the day. Um, when I like to train the most is first thing in the morning because I get it done. And I'm just like any one of you guys. Once the workout's done, you feel so much better, right? I feel like sometimes I go to the gym and I'm like, wow, oh, this workout's going to be shit. And I go and I train. It's like the best workout ever, right? So it really depends on your schedule. Okay, you're talking to a guy that was sponsored most of his career. When I was early, when I was working the security job and all that stuff, I would train from 8 to 10 at night because the gym closed at 10. Now, I pick times that the gym's not going to be crowded in Vegas because all I do when I work out is take pictures with these fans for social media. I'll be honest with you guys. Like, the kids want to take pictures for their Instagram. And every day in the gym, I take like 10 pictures no matter where I go. So it's, it's difficult sometimes to get the training at full intensity, even though it's not as important now. But I still think, you know, I prefer in the morning, but I think the best time is gonna be after several meals. If you're trying to gain size, you're trying to lean down, like I mentioned, I did, I mentioned going first thing in the morning, empty stomach, and getting a workout as long as your meals are sufficient the day before. Okay, whatever fits your schedule best. Good question though, a lot of people ask me that. When do you like to work out? After meals, because you want to be bigger, right? How big you want to get? As big as he can. Good answer. What do we got? Another lady. Hi, Jay. Um, thanks for coming out today. Um, you seem to speak with such focus and determination. There's a lot of um, built bodybuilders we've seen, seen and spoken to, and they count this story. But you seem to be on the next track and what's coming up. And you mentioned to the chat before that you'll be 53 in no time. Um, who will we see as Jay Cutler when you're 53? What's your plan? I live my life 15 minutes at a time. So, you know, if you asked me 10 years ago when I was 32, I hadn't won the Mr. Olympia yet. And if you said, oh, you're going to win the Olympia next year, I'd say, wow, you know, we'll see. You know what? I hope I'm still actively involved in fitness. I have a lot of different ventures. We all, I mean, I retired at 40, and, and to be honest, like, I looked at saying, okay, I'm going to start living my life at 40 and doing the things I want to do. I've traveled, and I spent time with my family. Last year, I went home more times last year than I went 15 years to see my parents. They live in Massachusetts, other side of the United States. You know, I don't have children. You know, I was married. I was divorced four years ago. And, uh, you know, I just don't know what the future brings. But I'm continuing to travel week to week. I have a booked out schedule. I'm still heavily involved and I'm just doing my best to stay in the best physical shape. My challenges are what your challenges are. My challenges are going to the gym every day, eating enough food, eating the right foods, working like crazy, and still trying to get to the gym on a daily basis and be better because I want to look in the mirror and I never want to look at myself and say, wow, I look like shit, you know? I want to look good. I want, I want this, these guys to tell me, oh, Jay, you still look like you can compete. That's flattering for me to be able to, to have people think that there's still a possibility at my age that I'll come back and compete after seeing how amazing these guys look. You know, I'll go to the show tonight and see these guys. But 
you know what? My life is so positive. I'm healthy. I've lived a dream career, like a storybook. And I will talk about this till the end of time and be able to influence people to believe in what their dreams are, no matter what the age, no matter what, the, what obstacles they have to overcome. And I realize there's just so many people that support it. So, you know, it's hard to really say, but I mean, I've done a lot of great things. I plan to do a lot of more great things, but I'm not planning on being the, the governor or anything like that, you know, that's the question. But I'll still be here, hopefully, and, and so will you, I hope. Okay, next question. Hi, Jay. Uh, my question is, do you think Kai will ever beat Phil Heath? If I'll ever beat him? No, no, Kai Green. Do you think Kai Green will oh. ever beat Phil Heath? No. Who disagrees with me? All right, so. I think it's going to be difficult, and I'll tell you why. We'll see how of an expert I am. My thought is Kai Green will never compete in the Mr. Olympia against Phil Heath again. We'll see if it stands true. Phil Heath's going to go win the Olympia. He's going to stay at the Olympia. Kai Green's going to win all these Arnold Classics. I think he goes from here to Brazil. And then I think there's a South Africa and I think there's a Spain at the end of the year. And I, I think he's planning on competing in all of those. But I don't know if Kai Green's going to compete at the Mr. Olympia again, to be honest. Okay. You can ask him. You're going to come to his seminars tomorrow? Ask him. See how he answers your question. I'll be curious to know. Okay. So when I finish, guys, listen, I'm going to be back at my booth. I'm at um, the BPI booth um, taking pictures till the end of the day. I would love to stand up here and take a picture with every single person because you guys have been so patient and came out here to support me. I can't really do that um, because they're pushing me out. But there's other people coming in. I'm joking. But I just want to thank everyone for the support. Um, I, I know there's people that are going to walk away from here and say, I should have asked Jay this or asked Jay that. But you're going to have the opportunity again if you continue to follow what I do. And you know what? If you didn't get a chance or didn't want to ask, come to my booth. I'll be there. I know the lines are long. But, you know, spend a little time. I obviously can't take 15 minutes with every person, but I try to talk to every person individually and, and uh, answer your questions. So I want to thank everyone for coming out and uh, supporting this, supporting the Arnold Classic and supporting us athletes. Not only the Jay Cutler, but the other guys as well. I know there's a lot of athletes to be fans of, and each one has their own character or personality that you guys may follow and be able to relate to yourself. But in the end, don't forget, a lot of you guys may be up here speaking at some point later in your career. We talk about things we may do in the future. I wish all of you the very best of luck. Okay, stay true to yourself, believe in yourself, and most importantly, surround yourself with the right people and the right support team that can get you to your ultimate goal, okay? Thank you guys very, very much. But I do need to get a Snapchat. Okay, and I'm going to do it. I need everyone to... No, act excited when I do this because I'm going to try to get everyone in this Snapchat. I'm going to do a selfie Snapchat. So I, can, so I can have my face in a little bit too. All right, so any of you guys that don't follow my Snapchat, Mr. OJ Cutler, I'm trying to make you guys world famous before you become world famous. All right, so we're here at the Arnold Classic Seminar with the fans. What do we think, fans? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you guys very, very much. Come see me at my booth. I'll be there till the close of the show. And anyone, I'll be at the show tonight, too. Okay?